Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit session. I am Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Today I have Dushka Zapata on the show. Dushka, como estas? Estoy muy bien, Daniel, ¿y tú? <laughs> I'm doing really good. She just said, she's doing really well, how am I? I'm doing really well. How's your, uh, how's your day going? My day is going awesome. I just got back from a yoga class, so I am sane and ready for this. Uh, what's yoga? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so for the listeners out there, um, let me give you a formal introduction. Dushka is all around awesome, amazing human being. Um, she is a student of mine. She is a certified yoga teacher. She is an author. She's an inspirer. She is just an all-around awesome person. Um, we met, I don't know, how long did we meet ago? Like a year and a half ago? Two years now? I think maybe, yeah, maybe a little longer. Maybe two years-ish. And she was she was really quick to uh, just get right in my face and be like, hey, we're going to be friends kind of a deal. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's been pretty awesome. Yes, I, I do that. <laughs> I identify you immediately as a good soul. Oh, well, thank you. Well, hey, that's that's high expectations, though. Uh, you can do this. <laughs> so, Dushko, we're going to get right into the show. And um, we started the same uh, the same way every time. So, why yoga? Yeah, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a long answer because I think it's such an important question. Sure, go ahead. So, I think the world is a really noisy place. And it's not just the honking and clanking and banging and drilling and all of the noise of the city. But... Everyone has an opinion on how we should be, what we should do, what we should say, where we should go, and we lose our way. Mm -hmm. We lose our way because we can't hear ourselves. Um, and then people come to me and tell me all the time, you know, I feel lost, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, um, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going, and we all have a guide, and we can't hear it. Um, and then we are constantly bombarded by messages that we are not enough, you know, that we need to do more and, and be more and be more productive and work harder and buy something and get something and change something. And I think that the overlying message is there isn't enough. You know, you need to hurry. It's running out. Whatever it is that you need is running out mm. and yet scarcity sells. So mm. I think yoga is the antidote to all of this. I think that just sitting quietly and listening to yourself and letting your energy trickle back in and hear what you want uh, is key to, to happiness. And I, I think that, you know, I go to yoga because I think it lets the truth in. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's one way to say it for sure. Like, and that's a real, I think that's such a good point that we don't really bring up. I think, you know, people really, I think I might've talked about this on the last show, but people go into it from injuries or people go into it, you know, because it's, it's a good physical practice and then something else happens. <laughs> it's like, yeah. absolutely. you know, I have a teacher, um, you actually know him, Darren, Darren Maine. Yeah. And he says, people accuse him of saying, you, you know, you broke up my relationship. Like yeah. everything <laughs> And I think, I think yoga is, you know, I was telling people a, a couple of days ago, we were talking about, you know, the, the changes that yoga brings to your life, right? And mm -hmm. I was saying that one of the hardest things to do is to, to begin by not believing everything you think. Right. And, you know, this means that you have to doubt yourself and it means that you have to be open to the fact that you might be wrong. And it means embarking on an exercise of unbelieving everything that you were convinced of. And once you start unbelieving, everything starts to unravel, right? And implode. So I think that yoga brings on this spectacular catastrophe. What what made you? Because I know you were. I mean, you were practicing for a long time, and then you. I, I mean, I remember distinctly when you started doing your teacher training. What made you like really go into teacher training mode, or where you wanted to go deeper in it? Was it because you were starting to get more cracked open, or you were starting to get more of your? You know, you're saying there's a lot of noise in the background. Were you starting to get more of your quietness, and you you wanted to learn more about it, or or what got yeah. you into it? I think it was just the sensation of going into a yoga class and being like, I want more, whatever this is, I want more. And I, I think it all started way before the actual, uh, you know, getting the pursuing of the yoga certification, because I was going through a really hard time. I was going through a lot of internal turmoil and my dad was sick and I was like contemplating getting a divorce. And I remember feeling like the only time that I had a measure of peace in the day was, was the yoga class that I went to. Mm -hmm. And so I just, as things, as my life sort of unraveled, as I just mentioned, and and 
things started imploding and falling apart and then getting built back together, I just realized that it, this was such an incredible gift and I wanted more and I wanted to just have the ability to maybe extend it to other people. It's crazy to me that some people have never practiced it in their lives and so other crazy that that people have never even heard of it. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that, you know, I'm I'm really glad that more people are starting to teach yoga. And for as big as it is, it's actually still not as big as it could be, but it's such an amazing um it's such an amazing practice both mentally and physically to to change your life. Like again, Darren says, there's two things that'll ruin your life, and that's yoga and therapy. Yeah. Yep. And and you know what? Um I, it's something there's so many things about yoga that I mean, going to a class and and meeting a teacher that you jive with is so important, but also so much of the beauty of yoga and what it really does for you is free and it's yours for any time like breathing. You know, breathing actually changes your chemistry and your composition and it 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 it, it removes stress it um, makes you a healthier person and all of those things are available to us and you know just the fact that some people don't know that they have this incredible ability to just calm down and take deep breaths is is just unbelievable to me yeah i agree i mean i was i was definitely when i when i first started i, I didn't know about any of that stuff until after I actually started, you know, practicing yoga. And then I was like, oh, I get it. There's there's a mindful part to this too. Exactly. And it, it's just so beautiful. I, I, whenever I practice yoga and I, I finish the class and I look around, I just feel like everyone looks so beautiful to me. Um, it's, just, it's just a beautiful practice. It really is. You're super inspiring in a few different ways. And, and one, just getting to know you as, as a person and, and people talking to you, whether you know it or not, and I'm sure you do at this point, like you just inspire people in even a small conversation, like a small hello. And one of the things that I know that you, you were doing in recently, or maybe in the last year, I think you started writing um, on an online forum. I think it was like Quora and it really started to take off. And I, I actually remember one day I was, I was having a conversation with you. I said, Dushka, I th I'm thinking, like you said earlier, like people are coming up to you telling you all these things. I had said, Dushka, I think I want to quit my job and just teach yoga full time. But I don't think I can do it because I'm not going to be financially stable. And, you know, it's way too hard and, and da, 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 da. And you quickly were like, when, you, when are we meeting for coffee? We need to talk about this. <laughs> I think we live in prisons of our own fabrication. I think we, we, we make up stuff that is limiting us and it just doesn't exist. And I think that it takes someone else to tell you this, what you believe to be true just really isn't true. And that, you know, begins incredible journeys. And I, I think that the notion of I can't do that because I don't have time or because I don't have money or because, I mean, I'm not saying that you don't have to pay your rent, but there's different ways of looking at things that allow you to do anything you want. So let's di let's dive deeper into this since we're on it. My my topic for you today was definitely like following your passion, you know, getting rid of the negative BS that doesn't make sense and and freeing yourself from that. I mean, that's really like a, a long concept of the of the topic, but I, I think that you speak so well on this and you just have such a big fire about it. And I mean, you inspired me to quit my job and do yoga full time. Talk a little bit more about it. I mean, I want I want people that are listening to the show to to really hear your, your fire and the way you approach it. Yeah, well, let me let me give you an example using me as an example and like my own limitations and you know what I worked against. So um, I mentioned earlier that my dad was sick. He died two years ago, and um, he was just this incredible, incredible man. He had an amazing life. If I told you stories, you, you probably wouldn't believe me. So let's just say that he was epic. And he told me through his whole life that he was going to write a book with, uh, you know, his memoirs. He's like, when I get older, I'm going to write a book with my memoirs. And he was just this articulate, incredibly good writer, just really talented. And I waited for this book all my life because he was, you know, secretive and adventurous and did all of the stuff that I didn't know he was doing. And, you know, he got early onset dementia and this book was never written. Got it. And that this this concept of I'm going to do it later just taught me that there's two types of procrastination. One is where you leave for later something that you don't want to do. That's the type of procrastination that we all know. It ruins your day. Um, the fact that you haven't done whatever it is that you wanted to do becomes a burden and it robs you of enjoying your day, right? Oof, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing. There's another type of procrastination and it's, it's insidious and it's difficult to recognize because it's crazy. 
And it's when you leave for later the things that you want to do the most, not the things that you want to do the least, but the things that you want to do the most. Um, because we disguise procrastination and call it responsibility. So I say, okay, I'm going to write, which is what I love the most, but first I'm going to do the dishes because you know, the dishes aren't, the house isn't going to clean itself. And then I'm going to, um, pay the bills cause I have to go to work and I, I can't spend time writing. Writing doesn't pay. I have to, I have to pay the bills. I have to go to work. And I tell myself all these stories and I never get around to writing, which is what I love. Mm -hmm. So you have to put your dreams first, your, whatever it makes you a creative person, whatever makes you joyful, whatever is your legacy, like what could be more important than that? So mm -hmm. maybe I can't write a book, but I can write a page a day and I need to do that first and everything else can wait. So I propose that we never postpone what makes us feel fulfilled. We, we can't let the, the book of our life remain unwritten. Mm -hmm. What do you what do you do? I mean, since we're talking about you a little bit, what do you do personally when you feel yourself getting into that that pr pr procrastination where you're like, well, I've got to go do this instead? Like when you actually stop yourself in that process, what does that look like? I actually look at it and say, thank you for helping me. But but you're a lie. You're telling me a lie. You know, whenever panicked Dushka says, oh, my God, you're not going to pay the bills because you're sitting here writing and no one's paying for your writing. I look at that and I go, thank you. Thank you, Dushka, for trying to protect me. You can go now. I'm okay. It's going to be okay. Ah, I see. You you invite the crazy in. Well, I, there's the crazy never leaves. <laughs> you, can't, you can't you can't tell something that you don't want to see it. Nothing is going to make it more present. You can say, I, I see you. I know you're there. It's going to be okay. I'm going to I'm going to write. It's going to be. I'll figure it out. It's like in the Buddhist teachings of the Mara mind, and for those of you that don't know what that is, it's it's kind of like it is the negative the negative self talk, but where where um, you know Sid, we'll call him for short, Siddhartha actually, when he recognizes that Mara's around, he actually invites her in and sits her down and invites her for tea and says, "Yeah, okay, cool, awesome. You're here to tell me all this nonsense. I see you. I know you're here. Thank you very much. Have a good day." And, you know, I think that's such an, a great story because we believe that we are certain things. Like, I am a worrier. I'm so full of anxiety. Um, I am responsible. And these are all habits. This is not something that you are. This is something that you do. What about I, I'm drop dead gorgeous? I say that one all the time. <laughs> that would be true. <laughs> that, that, that would not be a disbelief. That would absolutely be true. Um, and it actually, like, works in your favor. But if you were to say to me, you know, I'm anxious because I don't look as gorgeous today. I'd be like, you know, anxiety is something that you practice. No, we're, no. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I, I, I totally mean, you, we, yeah, we make up these stories that aren't even true. Yeah, we worry about things that don't actually happen or even about things that happen when worry is not helping us. Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, we, we are anxious and we worry and we, we re reinforce the wrong thing over and over. So you can look at that, look at it in the face and go, I hear you, but, but, but you're a lie. I, I don't have to worry because even if what you're suggesting is going to happen does happen, me sitting here and worrying about it is not going to get me anywhere. That's such an advanced practice because I, I know, you know, for a fact, like I was, I was sitting there telling you this stuff, like I can't do this and I can't do that. I'm not going to, I was making up all these excuses and I remember, you know, without actually slapping me in the face, but getting my attention very sternly being like, how do you, you just, you said that you're like, how do you know that's not going to happen or that's going to happen or that's not going to happen? And I was like, well, I don't know. And you're like, exactly. I don't want to hear that anymore. And I was like, oh, you're, I yeah, totally, and, totally was just getting in my own way. Exactly. And we live in the worst possible case scenario because we think it's going to protect us. But the best scenario, the best possible case scenario is equally plausible. And if you think of the best case scenario, the opportunities that lead to that scenario start opening them up because you can see them. You've written a few. You've written a few pieces on this, and you actually. I know you just gave a big lecture, a big, uh, almost like a mini TED talk here in the city about it, um, where it was about you know following your your uh, your passion and letting go of the excess. Yeah, it it was about um, you know someone asked me the sort of the premise was it, you know does the universe give you what you need? Does the universe like conspire in your favor? Mm -hmm. And my answer was, you know, I wanted to write and it's what I love doing the most and I don't have time. I have to work. I have a full-time job. My job is really demanding and I have to pay the bills and I have to clean the house and I have to be a good girlfriend or wife or whatever it is that I'm being at the moment. And 
one day I was like, you know what, what I need to do is write. And I'm going to get up every morning an hour before I, I usually do and write for an hour every day. I feel like that's doable. And at first I got up five in the morning, coffee, my computer, and I had my fingers on the keyboard and I thought, I don't know what to write about. I really, really don't know what to write about. And little by little, as I made space for this writing of mine, stories started to appear everywhere. So mm -hmm. I ask you, is the universe rising up to meet me by giving me stories? I think it's the power of my own attention. I, all of a sudden I start to see stories because I'm receptive to stories. So if you want something and you put your attention on that, I'm not saying you're going to get it. I'm not saying that this is a guarantee. That's not how life works. But you will see things that you don't see if you're convinced that they don't exist. Well, and you'll learn things along the way as well. Like, oh, hey, I now know that I have this much power or I have this type of strength over here or this actually doesn't make sense to me or this does make sense to me. Absolutely. And you can't be what, what happens is when you're when you're little and you learn something, for example, I'm going to be jealous or anxious or angry or yell or whatever. You learn something and, and you realize that when you're little, when you're four or five, you know, yelling at other people protects you. It actually helps you. But when you're in your 30s or 40s, all of a sudden yelling at other people is just not so useful. Right. So in your brain, it's stored as something that once helped. And that's why your brain has such a hard time letting go of, you know, Danny saying, I can't let go of my old job. I, I'll never make money. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's previous Danny protecting Danny. But you can let that go now because you are capable. You will work it out. You need to trust that you will work it out. Right. And I think that that's what it is. It is we are being ruled by our fears instead of being ruled by what we hope is true. Do you talk about this stuff? Because um, I know you have your book too that you just you just recently re released. Um, do you talk about some of these like strategies and and just about this topic in the book as well? Yeah. So I have I, have, I write now. My writing is like all over the place, but basically I um, I write a lot on Quora. Um, Quora is it's getting like a really great following. I'm I'm doing really well on that platform. It's very suited to me because it's a question and answer platform, and I answer questions. So it's uh, kind of got it. It's, it works for me. And then I um, collected my 2015 answers into a book called How to Be Ferociously Happy that was published in May. It's called How to Be Ferociously Happy? How to Be Ferociously Happy. That's right. That's amazing. Because ferocious happiness is like you have to protect it and defend it and fight for it. It just doesn't like happen to you while you're sitting back on a lawn chair. You know what I mean? Right. You go get it. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so I... I wrote a book called How to Be Ferociously Happy that was published in May. And then um, I'm going to come out with another book, November 4th. So, And what's, it, the, what's the next book about? The next book is short stories. And short stories would be, for example, the story that I just told you about my dad. Got and it. like I, how I discovered that there were two types of procrastination. And that's the second book. Um, but I already have enough material on Quora to like continue collecting and publishing a book like every six months maybe for the next three or four years. You are on fire, love. First, you started with inspiring a yoga teacher to quit his job and start doing yoga and or start teaching yoga full time. And now you're you're doing the same thing. You're writing your books. You've got your online uh, writing platform. You're doing some talks. That's that's amazing. I think, again, like for everyone listening, like if you're not inspired after this podcast, <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, um, inspiring you to quit your job and do what you do now is my crowning achievement. Good. I think that you are awesome. And I think that I can't wait to see what you do. And in the meantime, I'm coming over to the yoga class and benefit to puppies because I love them. So I'll see you there for sure. Oh, yeah. Just so everyone knows at the end of this month on the 28th, I've got a, uh, a yoga class with a, a fellow yoga teacher at Yoga Tree Hayes, 1.30 on the 28th. It's a Saturday. And it's uh, benefiting the SPCA. The best thing is, is uh, our friends over at Three Twins Ice Cream. They're donating ice cream to every a pint that everyone to everyone that comes, and it's a donation based class. So the the entire thing goes to the uh, the SPCA. So if you say you don't like pu puppies and ice cream, like I just again, it's one of those things. I got nothing else for you. We don't know what else to do for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dushka, I am I'm, I'm so glad that yeah I was able to you know I know you're busy and I'm so glad that I was able to you know get you on the show and I think that. You know, this for everyone listening out there, this is just a small taste of what this uh, what this powerhouse woman I call her. She's just amazing is is all about. And I would highly, highly, highly suggest to everyone to uh, hop on Cora and find her and also pick up her book because uh, it's I mean, if it's if it's if it's if 
if this in itself, like your answers now are this awesome, the book is going to be just that much me- meatier and juicier. If um, if people wanted to uh, find out more about you and your books, Dushka, where would the, where would they go to look? So my book, How to Be Ferociously Happy by Dushka Zapata is on sale on Amazon. Okay. The next book coming out November 4th, which I'm still iffy about the title, but I'll think of something, um, will also be on Amazon. And then Quora is just Quora.com, Dushka Zapata. Okay, cool. And uh, I'll have all those links um, down in the, uh, in the comment section. Dushka, is there anything else uh, you would love to say to the listeners before we take off today? Whatever you want to do, you have less time than you think. Except be a supermodel because I've already got that one down. <laughs> you have that down. <laughs> <laughs> Dushka, thanks again for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. Um, Until then, everybody, we will say bye-bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye.